example, if the dollar loses its status as a world reserve currency, that is the, the pillar that underpins American supremacy, then the military pillar, which is the other pillar of American supremacy, will fall away as well. That supremacy is also reliant on the ordinary man and woman in the street continuing to buy in US dollars. It's American consumers who have unwittingly sown the seeds for this conspiracy. Americans are among the biggest spenders and the worst savers in the world. Buy now and pay later seems to be their motto. US national debt is now $7.7 .7 trillion dollars and the entire debt of the whole country is an incredible $43 trillion. The average American now spends a record amount of their money just paying off the interest on all their loans. So if the petrodollar collapses and interest rates rise, the bubble will burst and then the stage is set for national bankruptcy. If that happened, um, you know, that would really be catastrophic for the dollar. It would be bad enough just to have a switch into the euro, uh, little by little, but if there was any big switch of these trillions of dollars accumulated in U.S. investment, it would really be catastrophic for the U.S. economy. We, we may be set back uh, more or less permanently. When you have that many dollars unleashed, you would have a massive devaluation, massive inflation. The whole world economic order will be changed and the United States would really be in a world of hurt. Teetering on the knife edge of financial meltdown, the US has always needed to keep a firm hand on the trading of its oil dollars. But in November 2000, the most serious attack on the sacred dollar was about to take place. If left unchecked, it could have been an economic Pearl Harbor. After years of struggling under crippling sanctions, Saddam Hussein decided to use the one WMD that no one had ever looked for or even thought about, the Euro. There was a guy once named Saddam Hussein who said, you know, I, I'm kind of mad the United States bombing me and Britain too, so I'm going to sell oil in the Euros. He came out and said that in the fall of 2000. It's a big secret here in the United States. With the mighty dollar's position as the world number one suddenly under threat, did a ripple of fear go through the Bush administration? From 2001 to the very beginning of the war, Iraq exported about 3.3 billion barrels of oil. We bought two and a half of those billion. We bought two thirds of the oil, but we had to pay in euros. We couldn't have the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve cannot print euros. So we have to sell GMs to Europe to get the euros or whatever we sell to Europe for goods and services in order to get the euros to buy the oil from Iraq. So the petrodollar recycling system began to break down. So according to this theory, Saddam Hussein signed his own death warrant. President Bush had no choice if he wanted to save his country. He quickly placed Iraq on his list of axis of evil nations. And with invasion plans already in place, the inevitable soon happened. I think the, the decision by Saddam Hussein to go for a uh, petro euro was uh, was the last straw. They had to move because uh, you know, the, the, the economy was threatened. And this is what you need to look at the whole aspect of Middle Eastern oil. The, the economies of, Euro, of Europe, the economies of the United States and the economy of Britain were threatened by Saddam Hussein's uh, decisions. With the Iraqi oil industry firmly under U.S. control, there was just one final task left to do to complete the conspiracy and save the dollar. The other big secret is the first thing the Bush administration did when they took over Iraq in May of 2003 was immediately reconvert Iraq's oil transactions from the euro back to the dollar. Even though from an economic perspective, it was in Iraq's favor because the euro was worth about 17 percent more than the dollar. So he basically wiped out 17 percent of their entire profits by going back to the dollar. While all this was happening, the American public was given very little information about how important oil and the petrodollars were to the US. So was there also a media conspiracy? Absolutely. 
Was it a media conspiracy? Absolutely. But you have to understand how the media works in Washington. If you go against this administration, they pull your credentials tomorrow. There are some of the, the leading reporters have been told, you're asking the president too many hard questions. And they've been said, if you don't stop asking these hard questions, you will have your credentials pulled. If you get your credentials pulled, you don't go to press conference in the White House. The reporters know the rules. Even those who are sympathetic and who understand the truth and the reality also recognize that should they try to project the voice or allow the voice of those who have the position, not of the loyal opposition to the empire, but those who really are exposing the empire, that they will be silenced themselves. Re-elected for a second term of office, George W. Bush seems intent on staying in Iraq and keeping control of the country's oil. The petrodollar appears to be safe, but one other country has dared challenge the U.S. control of the black gold. After years of denouncing America as the spawn of Satan, Iran has announced that in 2006 it will set up its own oil trading exchange that could threaten the exchanges of London and New York. Worst news for Bush and his all-conquering dollar is that Iran intends to invite all of the world's oil producers to trade their oil in euros. The same scenario that happened in Iraq is beginning to repeat itself. I'm afraid it's deja vu. This is what we've done with Iraq. Guess what? They are up for a big surprise. Iran is unlike Iraq. Population-wise, Iran is more than double Iraq. As far as the terrain and the territory, it's a harsher country. You know, it's mountainous, uh, resistance could be incredible. They were hoping that the invasion of Iraq would send a message to other countries that are contemplating going off the dollar standard. You know, that obviously hasn't worked out the way they intended it to. So it remains to be seen how far they're prepared to go in order to protect dollar hegemony. And the unthinkable is already starting to happen. Saudi Arabia, which has the world's largest oil reserves, is showing an interest in switching its oil trades into euros. If Saudi Arabia makes the switch to euros, all other oil producing countries will follow suit. Is the US going to let this happen? Is America going to stand by and let countries switch to euros so America then loses its place as the world's superpower and loses all the money it gets in petrodollars? And if not, how far is the US going to go to stay number one? We could look upon the invasion of Iraq as a good thing. On the other hand, we could look at the beginning of, uh, of, of World War III. So there you have it. From WMDs to US dollars to securing global oil supplies, everyone seems to have a take on why we went to war. Now, according to the White House and Downing Street, the war is about freedom and democracy. But according to one explanation, an alternative theory, it was a huge conspiracy designed to secure nothing less than US global supremacy.